Hi everyone and welcome to this video. There's been quite a lot of talk recently about electric scooters. Um, I know there's been talk in the House of Commons about changing the law regarding um, these these scooters um, and they're becoming more and more popular and they're getting cheaper as well. So I already had one, I had a really old old one, a very cheap one and um, my oldest daughter loved going on it with me um, and I thought they were quite fun as well so I decided to look for a good one so you can get them very cheap now and I'm hoping that this video is going to show you the very best electric scooter that's available in the UK uh, that fits certain criteria under £200 that's around about $250 if you're American of course so when buying an electric scooter there are a couple of important considerations but one of the most important ones is the wattage of the motor so there are a lot of scooters under £200 but if you're going to get a 100 watt motor or 150 watt motor or 75 watt motor it's not going to cut it unless you're a kid um, so for an adult you really do need around about 250 watts something like that for it to have enough power to to perform reasonably well um, so the other consideration is the size of the wheels now you need to have decent sized wheels you need to have about six inches if you go less than that you're going to be in for a bit of a rough ride so so they are the two main criteria that I've uh, I've gone by in order to filter out these results so six inch wheel or more 250 watt motor or more and of course the other one was under 200 pounds or under 250 dollars over the course of about two weeks or so I scoured a very popular auction site I made up saved searches I fiddled with the filters and all this sort of stuff um, to find scooters that would satisfy my criteria in the UK and there were lots and lots of different products um, but generally speaking there were only two that would satisfy the criteria now the weird thing is about these is that they're multi-branded so you could get a scooter that looks exactly like this and it could be a different brand, different make and model so that's something to be careful of this one on the left here this one happens to be called Mega Wheels S1 but I've also saw, seen circumstances where it has different uh, branding so be careful for that this one's the same, the one on the right, Gyro Smart it's also called Smartlon and it may have other names as well so if you're looking to buy one of these don't look for the exact make and model look for the design so if it looks like it and it's got its brackets in the same place the bracket designs the same and all that it probably is well I'm pretty much sure it will be the same one made in the same factory in China so that's something to bear in mind don't go by the brand name um, so so what happened then so I, I found the two um, you know designs or models or whatever then I didn't really care about the brand I just want whatever was the cheapest so um yeah, so of the two, the two best value ones in the UK that I can certainly see that are mass produced and readily available and cheap are these two, but of these two, which is the very best, and that's what this whole video is about, which is the best scooter under £200 that you can buy in the UK right now, and I hope to answer that question in this video. Alright, so something I need to point out is that this video has not been sponsored, I've paid for both of these with my own money. Um, with no discounts um, the sellers have not given me any incentives at all it's a completely neutral review um, and for this reason I won't be showing the seller names so you'll have to look for these products yourself I won't be sending any links or anything like that but these are the two anyway that I believe are the best value and uh, if you go by the design of the thing you should be able to find them yourself okay so the best way to identify these products is by the photo um, because they're fairly unique in their design so if you have a scooter that looks like this it is this the scooter it has that bracket and all this sort of stuff here these features so if it has these features this is the product that I'm reviewing okay if you see this on a popular auction website this is one of my best value too this is what it looks like 
and here's the gyro smart one so that was the mega wheels gyro smart this one it's also called smartlon and possibly a few other things and that's what this one looks like and there are the photos for the second scooter that I'm going to be reviewing so if it, again if you go on a, a website and it looks like this it's got these sort of photos this will be the product so here we go here are the two products I bought both approximately 170 pounds each and I'm going to review them so specifically I've got a list here of stuff that I'm going to review and this is something I've compiled over the uh, time that I've been spending with them because I've been using these for about two weeks now so I'm going to compare the speed, the range, the front brake, the back brake, the steering, the grips, the controls, the folding bracket, the ride and the comfort and suspension, the rigidity of the body, the deck, the cornering, how it climbs. Then additionally I'm going to also going to review whether it's waterproof, the display, gears, the light, any little things that are potentially dangerous. Um, the positions of the charging sockets and the chargers and any other little issues like accessories and stuff like that and um, so there we go that's what I'm going to review so at the end of this review uh, hopefully I'll be able to tell you the best value scooter under 200 pounds in my opinion okay both electric scooters have arrived and I'm just going to show you the first one So here's the box for the first one. I'll just pull this out, I can show you it properly. So it says Mega Wheels V Scooter S1. This will come out of here. There we go. Put this box over here right now. Let's see if we can um, glean any interesting specifications or anything from this. Um, there's a picture of it. So it says lithium battery, maximum speed 23 kilometers per hour, maximum mileage 8 to 12 kilometers, charging time 3 hours, max loading 68 kilograms. 68 kilograms, that could be an issue because I'm about 75 kilograms. Climbing gradient 15 degrees. Okay, anything else? Foldable in two seconds. 5,000 milliamp hour. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, made in China. I thought that. Then we've got the same thing again here. And on this side, we've got this here e scooter S1. The height of the scooter can be freely adjusted. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so there's the box for the first one. Now I'm thinking, should I open it or should I open the next one? I think I'll actually open it, yeah. So, Mega Wheels e scooter S1 for about £160, and this is inside the box. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. And here's the second scooter. This is the one um, that is called Smart Flon. See? Smart Flon. Let's have a look at this one. certainly packed a lot better, um, but then that doesn't mean a great deal really, does it? So, there's the plug. And, um, it's like compartmentalised uh, through the packaging, so... Alright, so this is the Mega Wheel scooter. I just thought I'd give you a closer look. We have the grips, the controls, the stem, uh, a clip to adjust it, the wheels, the bracket and the deck, the brake which is a very good brake and the wheel and this is the mega wheel scooter and this is the other scooter which uh, I call the smart one scooter there are the grips, the display and the controls, the stem and the button, 
And then we go down here. There's the bracket on the wheel, the deck, and the rear wheel. Okay, this is the big scooter downhill test. Yeah, 19 kilometers per hour, or so it says anyway. So I'll just ride back. It is quite fun to be honest. 20 kilometers per hour it's saying. And this one has two gears, not just one. There is a slight incline here as well, I don't know if the camera is pointing it out, but there is one. Yeah, it feels as though it could go a lot faster than what it is. But it is climbing. Um, it's a small incline. It's only a few degrees, but it's climbing fine. And it's maintaining about 20 kilometers per hour. Which tells me it's a hell of a lot more power than this. Yeah, so the big scooter, this one here, it's still maintaining 20 kilometers per hour. It feels okay, as you just saw. I just overtook a guy who was jogging, and he's quite far behind now. So yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, and that's the end of this one. Roughly two, two to three minutes. Okay, here we are. Okay, so this is the second scooter on its downhill test. There we go. Some of the things YouTubers have to do in order to make these reviews. Driving down here, it's got to be 10, 15 kilometers per hour or so, with one hand on the, the wrong hand on the accelerator. Anyway, whatever. So this is the, yeah, this is the cheaper one, and it's slower. Quite a lot slower. Yeah, it actually feels like it's struggling a little bit here. Let's keep going, keep going. There you go, it's done the hard part. This one's quite a bit slower, I'd say. Yeah, quite a bit slower. Although this model has suspension. And the suspension is actually pretty good. It looks cheap. It looks cheap, but it does work. Um, now you see these sticks over here. If I go over these sticks, I can't feel it. Sometimes you hear like a 
noise, but it, you can't feel it already. I didn't feel, well, barely felt that. On the other one, I would feel it. It feels a lot firmer. So that's one good thing about this one. But yeah, it's not as fast. This one's not as fast. In fact, it's a little bit underwhelming. You feel, you feel as though you want to go quite a bit faster. The other one's a little bit more appealing in that, in that regard. But yeah, the suspension's good, so... That's something. Now, how long is it going to take to get there? The other one did it in, was it 2 minutes 45, something like that? About 2 to 3 minutes, something. And it does struggle a little bit to get up these inclines as well. But um, both of them could get up that hill, which I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, so both of them could climb the hill, but this one really struggled. It was going at a snail's face, whereas the other one uh, was more able to do it. So this one's not quite as powerful. I suspect maybe it doesn't have a 250 watt motor, or maybe it's tuned differently, maybe. Yeah, the brakes are not quite as good on that one. Okay, so this is the issue with the brakes. Presumably they're electric brakes. Um, presumably, or maybe they kind of go in reverse in the motor, so the motor stops. So it's the same kind of idea, this little flappy thing which is supposed to stop them. Um, however, on this one, it's much more powerful, but it's not that powerful that it throws you off. Um, so yeah, this one has a more powerful brake. Not only that, um, if you look at the mechanical brakes, which are the real ones, this one is pretty pathetic, and it doesn't actually contact properly underneath. It's, the, um, it's like a, a circular uh, piece of metal, which is supposed to uh, contact onto the onto the tyre, the maximum surface area. But the rear brake on this is poor. The rear brake on this one, however, is very very good. There's a lot of surface area, and you see when it when you press down with your foot, it's it's very good. So this one definitely has the best brake. The cheap one also has the best grips, in my opinion. They're very ergonomic and they fit your hand a lot better. Um, these foam ones aren't as good, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, they're fine, they're okay to use, um, but they just don't feel as good as the as the cheaper ones' grips. And now for steering. The steering on the big, more expensive one is, is very good. Yeah, the steering on the uh, on the cheap one's okay. Um, it's not bad, but it's a bit. It feels a little bit rickety, and it's a bit noisy, like a bit screechy, or as though there's a bit of grinding. Whereas the other one feels like there's um, like a bearing or something in the steering. I'll show you now. So the cheaper one has this stem here, 
and down here you can see that there are two knots and if I try and steer it you can see that it's not quite uh, you know there's no bearing it's a little bit gritty and uh, if I ride it you hear that it feels a little bit stiff and there's a bit of creakiness to it whereas the bigger one it has one big pole down here and I think there's a bearing like it's very easy to turn it's very easy and very smooth so when it comes to steering this is the more fluid one definitely the bigger one when it comes to controls both of them got this flappy thing here and they're both not far not much different to each other but I'd say this one feels just a slight just a little bit better there's more of a like a pleasant springiness to it so also when it comes to controls uh, the bigger one here has this display uh, and it also has this button here which if you tap twice you can change gear like that so that's quite a cool thing so to lock the big one and unlock it you do this pull that back and then with your foot lift this up at the same time and then clip it in place like that and it's done and to unlock it you press this red tab here and let it drop down and then press that like that and that's the big one the smaller one uh, has a bracket like this so you undo this here this bolt and then you have to lift this up and put it down at the same time and sometimes it gets stuck it didn't get stuck this time like that and you can actually lock it into place with the bolt but there's no point in locking it when it's already open so that's how the second one works and to unlock it you have to hold this and then pull this off so it's a little bit, a little bit more awkward than the other one so it can get stuck and get caught like this so it's quite a bit more awkward but you know it's it's not terrible out of the two brackets I'd say the bigger one is the better bracket so here's a close up of the bracket this is the bigger one's bracket it's basically big chunks of aluminium thick aluminium plate and here's the cheaper ones bracket it's basically one thing that goes into these two grooves here is spring loaded you pull it and it goes into two grooves or catches and this is to tighten up so that it can't spring out the catches which you wouldn't really be able to anyway because the spring's quite strong but they're the two brackets okay ride comfort if you talk about ride comfort this one is generally the better one it feels smoother it feels a bit more solid and more comfortable however it doesn't have suspension and this one does have suspension so if you think you're going to be uh, riding over twigs and stones and whatever you might prefer this one if you're not uh, riding over twigs and stones I'd say definitely this one in general this is the better one uh, but basically this one just has a bit of suspension uh, which makes it feel a little bit more comfortable if you're going over stones when it comes to the deck which is this part here I'd say this one is better not in terms of the quality really I'd say the quality is about the same but there's just more space to put your feet and uh, yeah I prefer that whereas this one you know it's like see what I mean there's not a great deal of space on that one this one is quite a bit of space so yeah this one's better for deck I'd say okay ability to climb I tested both of them on the same climb and the more expensive one was clearly the winner there this one was just about to give up the smaller one was just about to give up the uh, bigger one, the more expensive one, had a little bit more power left to give I think it could climb even higher okay waterproof now this one's very very waterproof and the deck is waterproof underneath is waterproof 
I'd say this is very good in terms of water. The only place I can see is these little holes here that water could get into. Now I doubt that that would do any damage though. This is also waterproofed here, the uh, connector, the charging connector. And this one's not quite as waterproof. You can see that there are lots of gaps for water to get into. There's a gap here for water to get into and there's a gap here for water to get into. I don't particularly like that because um, can sometimes come off, so that's not a great way. Uh, water can also get into the bracket. And more importantly, water would get into the charging thing if you didn't uh, close it or whatever. So, yeah, it's just a little bit and stuff. Yeah. So when it comes to waterproofing, this one is definitely the best one. has a light and to be fair it's quite bright. I'll try and get a light shot to show you. Uh, the other scooter on the other hand doesn't have a light at all so I'm not able to compare them there. Okay I've also got a note on my um, paper of things to record. Uh, dangerous things and miscellaneous issues. So this bracket here, if you don't know how the bracket works you can hurt yourself. Um, I actually did it the first time I opened this thing up. I didn't understand how it worked, so I just opened it and the whole lot collapsed onto my leg and it did hurt. Um, so yeah, it's a great bracket, but uh, don't play with it until you've got a grip of, you know, how to open it and how to close it. And miscellaneous things on this cheaper scooter um, are this. There's a wire sticking out which I don't like. This plastic cover is forever coming off and it's difficult to get back on and the other thing is the motor on this one gets very 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 hot and if you use it for like half an hour or so yeah it gets really hot hot enough so that I couldn't hold it for more than like 10 seconds okay so rear lights they're vibration powered so when as soon as you start riding they start blowing um, they're not amazing, but you know, they're okay. These two, I'd say, are a little bit brighter than the other one on the other model. And to change the batteries, because they're not powered by the main battery, they're powered by little coin cells, I think you'd undo that bolt there, or that nut, or whatever it is. And uh, this presumably would come off, and then you change the batteries. On the other one, I haven't yet worked out how to take it off, but I, I think maybe it would pull off or something like this I don't know or maybe there's a screw underneath I haven't quite worked it out but this one's the same it's vibration powered it's not quite as as bright as the other one and the other one's got two so when it comes to lights I'd say probably the the other one is better just by a touch it's not the most important thing The stand on the bigger one is a lot better, um, it's a lot stronger and it feels a bit more expensive and it sort of springs back in two like this, pivots on that square thing. It's quite strong. The stand on the cheaper one isn't good. If you just have a slight touch back it will basically fall that way. If you have a slight touch forward it will fall that way. Uh, and sometimes it does fall over so it's not great. So the more expensive one also has a battery level indicator at the bottom there, signified by uh, some little dots, whereas the, the cheaper one has it down here, I'll show you. But that's not very useful when you're on a ride. Uh, I've tried to like kneel down, because I'm being a little bit lazy, just to have a look, and you can't. So basically while you're riding, you can't see how much battery is remaining, which is a bit poor really. When you look at the quality of the wheels, both of them spin freely and both of them have uh, nice bearings. These are the front ones. 
and these are the back ones. To be, but to be fair, both of them, both scooters have pretty good quality wheels. When it comes to adjustability, the Smarthon scooter isn't adjustable at all. But then again, it is set at a pretty good size. The Mega Wheel scooter, on the other hand, is very adjustable. You can adjust this here in order to give you a different angle of the grips, and uh, you can also adjust these here, these controls, to give you a different angle for them. You can also adjust the height using this here. You can undo it and then pull it up, and there's like a, a button, uh, I can't remember, like a button spring thing. Uh, to lift the stem up or down and there's also adjustments here as well uh, which I don't think are really supposed to be played with um, and of course that's just to change the uh, the wheel, uh, you know change the stem I imagine to tighten the stem so this one's very adjustable Okay, so I've used my GPS to record the actual speeds of uh, both of these on a short journey and the bigger one, the more expensive one, is the fastest one, and it has the two gears, so yeah, the bigger one is going to win that particular competition. Range, same story, um, I've got two recordings of the same trip, or a very similar trip, and the bigger one, the more expensive one, has the biggest range also. So when it comes to the front brake, the cheaper one has a more powerful front brake, so the smaller one would win that. The front brake of the bigger one is not quite as powerful, which, I, which suggests to me that really, um, when it comes to the front brake, the smaller one is the safest one. When it comes to the back brake, again, the smaller one is the safest one. The back brake is way better than this one. Yeah, substantially better because the surface area is a lot better and the quality of the brake is much much better uh, it's a really good design whereas this one's quite pathetic to be honest when it comes to steering the biggest one I'd say is better um, it has a nicer front tyre as you can see here it's more rounded better for cornering than this one this one's more flat um, and also the steering tube is a lot smoother and it feels like there's a bearing in there or something Whereas this one is a bit more grindy and gritty. So yeah, when it comes to steering, I'd say the bigger one is, is definitely the best one. When it comes to grips, I'd say the cheaper one has the better grips. Um, they're a lot more comfortable. But at the same time, these are not terrible grips. They do okay. But yeah, this cheaper one here, I'd say, just has the edge on the better grips. To be honest, the controls are pretty much comparable. Although the controls on this one are slightly smaller, uh, you know, there's not really anything to look at, which you wouldn't really expect there to be on controls. And these feel just a touch better. So I'd say this one wins on controls, but they're only just little, uh, uh, you know, nudgy things, so it's not the end of the world. This one would win, I'd say. When it comes to brackets, I'd say this one is, is the better bracket. Um, and that's because it looks very solid, and you can actually do it one-handed um, with ease whereas this one it gets stuck and um, yeah you need it's really a two-hand uh, job because it gets stuck all the time and you know you just need two hands to be able to hold one part while the other part collapses and, and the other way around so I'd say this is the better bracket although having said that the very first time I opened this I hurt myself because of the bracket because this swung open and smacked me in the leg. Anyway, I'd still say this is the better bracket. For general ride comfort, I'd say the bigger one, the more expensive, is more comfortable to ride. Having said that, if you're riding over stones and things like that, then the smaller one has a little bit of an edge because it has suspension. And although the suspension looks very cheap, it does actually work, whereas the bigger one has no suspension at all. So, I don't know. Generally speaking, the bigger one is more comfortable, but if you hit rocks and stuff, well not rocks but stones, then this one has a little bit of um, an advantage. The decks, I'd say that the bigger one is better, purely because it is bigger. And um, you can carry an additional person on it, a small person, which is great for me because uh, my kids love scooters. When it comes to the rigidity, 
the bigger scooter, the more expensive scooter, feels rigid, it feels more stable and it feels like it's been better put together. Uh, it feels smooth and uh, just a bit unsolid, whereas the smaller one feels a little bit creaky, clunky sort of thing. So definitely the bigger one is, is better for this. I'd say cornering, the bigger one is better. Uh, the tyres, front tyre seems to lend itself towards cornering better and it feels very smooth on cornering whereas the other one, the smaller one here it feels a little bit gritty when cornering and the tyre doesn't seem to lend itself towards uh, sharp turns although it can do it when it comes to climbing there's a clear winner and that's the bigger more expensive one um, the smaller one just struggled at that slope and uh, the bigger one seemed to have a little bit more power to go so the bigger one, more expensive one is the better one here Alright, so all in all, we pretty much do have a clear winner, and that's the Smartlon or Gyro Smart one, which is the big one here. It pretty much outdoes the, the slightly cheaper one in most ways, um, but what does let it down is the brakes. The brakes are pretty poor. I mean, the cheaper one has way better brakes, way better quality brakes. So, yeah, that's the strong point of the cheaper one. Um, also this one has a little bit of suspension which is uh, a tiny advantage, or a small advantage over this one too but in general the bigger one wins because it has it's faster, it has a better range it has I'd say better steering the grips are not too bad, it has better controls it has a better folding bracket uh, it's slightly more comfortable to ride it seems to have a more rigid body the deck is a bit bigger it's better at cornering and it's better at climbing and also the smaller one has a few drawbacks as well I mean it doesn't have uh, the display, it doesn't have the gears, it doesn't have the light um, it has the, uh, a few little problems over here as well that I've shown you uh, with that thing and what a wire sticking out the motor gets very hot and the socket position uh, for the charging port is not in a great place so yeah I have a clear winner it's the smart one one here uh, gyro smart so here it is once again. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching. Bye.